Hey everybody, Shane here with Making Money Media, and today I wanted to talk about antiques. This is my Etsy store, and I currently have like 95 listings on there or something like that. Uh, just various items. I thought this was kind of interesting. This is a, that mop bucket that I sold for like 125. They're saying it's going to be used in a production on stage at the Met Opera, which is, that's kind of cool. But anyway, um, today I wanted to talk about someone that I follow that is really an inspiration for me in the antique world because they do it right and they impress the hell out of me. And that is this gentleman right here, or, or lady, I don't know, I've never met him before, but it's factory20.com. And they take these really incredible pictures, as you can see here, right? It looks kind of random, you know, uh, but then, you know, he sets them up and he always throws like little things like the bottles in here or, you know, just does different things, has this chippy paint background, sometimes just an all white background, very industrial setting. But, and then, you know, in this case here, this is a vintage folding chair, right? That's what I would have called it. But he takes it a step further and says, vintage naval officer's folding chair. And then in the description, old growth hardwood construction, unique steel crisscross bracing, vintage 1930s, you know, and he's asking $310 a piece. A piece, not for the set, a piece. So I did some searching on here, and I'll show you how to search his site in a second. This was something that he's actually sold already. You can see right here it says sold. And this is, he called this one folding admiral chairs. Uh, I like this one because this one has the back, but these three are missing the back. But he's actually sold these. These are actually sold, and I imagine they sold for the same money. So what I like about this guy is his description. Now here, here's a red double set of red bar stools, but he calls these vintage wrinkling minim minimalist stools, 1950s wrinkling circus minimalist stools, hardwood construction with enameled red finished. You know, it's stuff like that that makes people go, wow, I want that. It's, you know, he could have said vintage red stools. But he really goes into this description. He makes you think that they come from the circus. Uh, you know, I don't know if they did or not. But, again, he puts the bottles here. He's got this nice, in this case, a gray background, wood floor. And he does these things where everything is kind of off-center. But, you know, he asks for these ridiculous amount For that pair, I don't know if you saw that, that pair... 1,500, 1,500, I'm sorry, 1,050. So a thousand bucks, he wants $500 a stool, which is just kind of crazy, right? But let's just do a quick search here for stools. So if we go to cl click on this little thing, now make sure you click this include sold items and let's type in stools. And what I love about this is it will show you here, this is sold. These three have sold, this one they've sold, these have sold. So it tells you that he does sold, 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 sold. He does get that money for this kind of stuff. It's not random. He truly does get that kind of money for the stuff he's trying to sell. So that's really why I, I find this guy fantastic to, to inspire me to get pricing for the stuff that I want to get. Here, this is a great, here's a wood, here's a, I mean, a metal, metal stool, you know. Uh, I would I would have called it maybe a piano stool, but no, this is a Siemens nautical galley stool. Really, galley stool? Really? You know. But again, he's got he's it's off centered. He's got some random stuff over here. Then he does a little bit of close ups. Shows you the top. You know, shows you the chippy of the paint. Again, he's asking four hundred and ninety dollars for this stool, and we just talked about stools. He's getting it. Vintage 1940s, vintage industrial Siemens nautical galley stool. Are you kidding me? I would have said industrial stool, vintage chippy paint. But doesn't that sound much better? Vintage industrial Siemens nautical galley stool. Cast iron construction, swivel seat with turn screw height adjustment. Time worn patina to pistachio painted finish. This is beautiful artwork of words that he can use to totally sell this stuff for top, top dollar. I would be lucky to get 50 bucks for this. He's going to ask for 90, and the best part of it is someday he's going to get it. 
Next up, let's take a look at this. There's a nice table, right? That's a nice table. It's kind of neat. It's got two different size drawers on it. This is a vintage, monumental, bibliotech work table. Bibliotech work table. It's got the bottles on it. It's got a lamp on it. $1,475. 1940s, vintage, monumental, bibliotech work dev table desk. Old growth wood construction. Generous large surface library table, solid and stable construction, two large sliding drawers, rich, well-worn patina. I mean, oh my God, that is so good. That's the writing is so eloquent, and he's getting fourteen seventy-five for that, man. I mean, it's ter it's, it's, it's incredible. Um, here's another one. I love this one. Eldritch old pier house work tables. Now, I don't know if Eldritch, I'm not sure exactly what that is, but even if he left that off, old peer house work tables. The fact that he uses the word peer, oh, and they're from the Netherlands, from the 1920s. Are they Are they really? I don't know. I'm not going to dispute it, but you know what? It makes for a great story. If you're selling it to somebody in New York or L.A., they can say, yes, these came from the Netherlands, and they're circa 1920s. Vintage old century canal peer house work tables. Mill cut old growth wood, unique, unique X base design, solid and stable, rich time worn finish hair available, but they're sold each for $980. Are you kidding me? $980. So let's go to the search here. Let's go to the search, include sold, and we're just going to type in tables. If I could spell, it would help. Table. Now let's take a look here. I just got some different tables, but again, sold, 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 sold. So again, he's going to get that money. You know, he's going to get that money for that, right? Uh, here's another table. This is this is really kind of cool. It's a folding, like I would I would have said a folding camping table, vintage. What does he say? Hamptons caravan tailgater table usa new york 1920s really is it from new york who the hell knows but man it just makes it sound wonderful vintage hamptons caravan tailgaters folding table unique portable table with folding hardwood frame and rolled slat top solid and sturdy time worn patina it can be yours for only twelve hundred dollars and again he's taking this picture it's a wide shot you kind of get this feel like there's some rackets there. Maybe they're outside, you know, and, you know, there it shows you that the top, it rolls up, kind of folds up. It's kind of cool. I mean, it's a very cool piece. It's totally a cool piece. But honestly, for that price, I mean, but the pictures are beautiful. But for $1,200, really, the thing is, he'll get it. He'll find that one person out there that has to have it. And uh, I just love it. I, I find this guy so fascinating. And lastly, this is some folding tables. I love this French Bistro Cafe Garden Tables with a J. Cardin, Cardin, I don't know. 1950s, vintage French Bistro Cafe Garden Tables, all steel construction. Classic Bistro folding design. Extensive, time-worn patina. Solid and stable, two available. You can have one for the low, low price of $790. So what I love about this guy is he creates this sense of value in his antiques. He knows that that these aren't something you're going to find on the shelf at Walmart. You're not going to find it every day on, uh, on eBay. He's, he's setting himself apart, selling these very unique pieces, but by giving you a story, telling you a story, and that is what I urge you to do if you're like me and you are selling stuff online, is to get to that point where you can just get creative with the description. It will help you demand a much higher price okay now this is someone that i follow on etsy and it's 86 home or 86 for the home uh i urge you to look this gentleman up or again gentleman lady i don't know i never met him but they do some really incredible stuff kind of like factory 20 but they ask really top end prices for stuff that i think anybody could pretty much find at a uh, at, a, at their local auction so what I like about this guy is his pictures, first of all, are simple. Just against a white background. Almost all of them are against a white background. They're kind of consistent that way. 
and they just have a very high-end feel, right? Um, so what I love about this guy also is that, like, okay, for example, here's a blue step ladder, uh, $325. Vintage industrial table green, 1850 Vintage bent wood chair, $350. So his descriptions aren't maybe as fluffy as Factory 20, but still, it's pretty cool. I mean, antique buggy stool, Victorian footstool, apparently. Here's an antique trunk for $1,100. So, he's got some pretty cool stuff, but I don't think any of it's terribly, terribly rare, but he's asking top dollar. So, if you come over here, he's got 1,529 sales as of today, and as you click on that, you can see uh, what he sold. Now, I was just on here last night, and I can tell you right now, that, that one just sold. Oh, it's reserved. But uh, this is kind of interesting. This uh, bistro set here, this patio table... Okay, so this uh, this table here, we're, we're going to click on it, and it's sold. And there's this cool tool called Flipper. Anyway, you, you highlight the URL, you copy it, and you go to FlipperTools.com, and you put your URL in there, and you hit OK, and it will search it, and it will tell you how much an item has sold for on Etsy. And in this case... That table and four chairs sold for $2,650 plus shipping, right? So that's pretty incredible. Um, let's take a look at something else he sold. Let's take a look at this chandelier lamp here. Um, again, we're going to copy the URL. And we're going to come over here. And we're going to search it. And that lamp, you got $650 plus shipping for that lamp. And there's something really terribly rare about that lamp. But, again, he's asking top, top dollar, setting himself apart from this competition. So let's take a look at one more random thing here. Let's see. Uh, there we go. Here's these Bentwood chairs. Let's just see what he got for these two these two chairs. Because I've seen on the main page where he's got one by itself. And these two chairs, wait for it, sold for $650 plus shipping. Oh, my word. And we know that he's got one of those on his main page right here for $350. So, again, what I'm urging you to do is to really pay attention to your photographs. Pay attention to your um, description right and what i'm really pointing out is any of this stuff he could he could have sold this for 100 bucks but he sold it for 650. now let's just say it took him a year let's say this just sat on his shelf for a year for him to get that 650. i would rather get that 650 one time than sell uh 65 items for ten dollars right so that's my thought on the process um like I said, this item here just came up last night, or just came up today or whatever, because it was not there on his sold last night. So I just want to see if I can look that up while we're talking to see what did he get for that uh, vintage chair. And it says 225 plus shipping for that vintage striped deck chair. Again, that's really good. That's really good money for that stuff. So those are things that I'm recommending to you to do and there are things that I also need to embrace and do myself um, and I'm trying to do that with more and more items to ask higher and higher prices and to do a better job with the descriptions. Um, before I go I want to mention something called the Martha Stewart effect which is kind of what we're talking about here overall today. Martha Stewart when she first started off was selling pies at the local grocery store and she priced her pies the same as the grocery store and nobody was buying them. And she went home disgruntled, came back a week later, and she doubled the price of her pies and she sold out. Because suddenly these pies had value. They were rare or they were special. They tasted great, whatever it was, that created this, the, increasing that price increased the value in the consumer's mind that they had to have these pies, even though they could have bought them for half price the week before. And that's kind of what we're doing with antiques is we're creating this value this rarity, this specialness, this thing that you can put in your living room and tell your guests that it came from, you know, the Netherlands in the 1920s or whatever it is, 
Um, anyway, that's what I urge you to do. That's how you create value and get away from the commodity market uh, by creating unique items that, don't, that people just can't find anywhere else. So, hey, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Please like, please subscribe. We've got a lot of great material coming your way. So stay tuned. And thanks, everybody. Have a great day.